Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Thanks again for being here. I'm excited to get into this one today because as promised, I have a mini sunscreen haul for you. You might not know that I promised this, but I did. <laughs> um, and what we have here, I will just go ahead and show you. We have the top sellers of Paula's Choice sunscreens. So I obviously did some minis because I've never tried them and like, why would I spend the full amount when I could get a mini size? So that's actually a suggestion that I have for you guys. I know it seems obvious, but if you didn't know, Paula's Choice does these like travel size, they're about a half ounce and they're quite a bit less. So, you know, you can try it out, see what you like. And hopefully this video will also help. So without much more, let's get into it. But don't forget, like, subscribe, do those things. It really helps. And I really appreciate you all for watching. So let's get going. Guys, this is big news. I did my hair again. This is two days in a row. You didn't see the other day, but I'm pretty impressed. And now I'm just gonna put it up. So that's why I don't do my hair. <laughs> it's just so hard. I don't know how people can do their makeup and everything with their hair down. Like I, I, I cannot. So anyway, this is very hard to hold them all. We're gonna be testing out all four. I What I did was I went to their website and I chose the top ones, like the best sellers. I thought that was appropriate. And it worked out that I got two mineral and two chemical. So hopefully one of these will work for you. If you don't like chemical sunscreens, there should be a mineral one. If you don't like mineral, obviously chemical. And I'm just gonna kind of go in the order that they were on on the website, like the best seller. So let's go ahead and start. We are starting with the one I actually could not get in the travel size. So this is Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 30. So this retails for $33 for the two ounce. This is the full size. If you got the travel size, like I said, that's a half an ounce and that retails for $10. So this one has 13% zinc oxide and that is the main active SPF filter. That is a mineral sunscreen. If you're not sure what mineral versus chemical is, um, I would suggest doing a little research. There are tons of videos out there, but it's just the chemical versus mineral filters that they're gonna use. For mineral, it's gonna be zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. Those are the two that they use. And then for chemical, there are quite a few, so I'm not gonna go over each one, but that's kind of the basic, um, go do some research. I think it's important that you know what works best for you. I'm not gonna tell you what works best for you because I don't know. What I'm gonna do today is I am going to be putting half and half on my face since I magically came up with four that are two and two. Um, I'm gonna do one side with one mineral, one side with the other mineral, same thing for the chemicals. So this is a mineral tinted sunscreen. Um, it doesn't, ha it's not as fluid as some of the others. As you can see, it's not really moving on my hand. Um, it is supposed to be for normal, oily to combination skin. So I'm gonna just go ahead and start applying it and I will talk through kind of like what I think of it and what the claims are. As you can see, it is tinted um, and it is a mineral screen. So like, look at this compared to this side you can kind of see like a little bit of a white cast. It does go on super smoothly for a mineral sunscreen. It's just very um, kind of emollient and slippy feeling, which is great because one of the main issues with mineral sunscreens is the chalky feel. And companies are getting a lot better about not having that like super heavy chalky feel. Um, but the issue then becomes the white cast. So. As you can see, I'm only putting on a little bit at a time because over the years I've learned with a mineral sunscreen, you really, if you go in with globs and globs, you're gonna have a white cast and you're gonna spend hours, maybe not hours, but you're gonna spend a lot of time rubbing it out. So I would suggest going in with small amounts and then layering if you need to, which you should. All right, let me finish applying this and then I'll come back. Most people find mineral sunscreens are a lot better around the eyes, so you could even put it on your eyelids. Um, you're not gonna get a stinging feeling for the most part, um, like you would sometimes with chemical sunscreens. Okay, so that's pretty much applied. As you can see, I think there is a bit of a cast. Um, it kind of just makes me look a little ghostly, <laughs> but it's not terrible. This is way better than a lot of ones out there. And I think especially for lighter skin tones, it's gonna be pretty perfect. I am like a medium skin tone, light medium. Depends on the time of the year. Uh, my face is actually lighter than the rest of my body. 
I can get pretty tan. So for me, I would have to put some makeup on over this unless I wanted to kind of just look a little like sick, ghostly. But it's really not a bad one. But I just want to be very clear with that. My, one of my biggest pet peeves these days is when sunscreen companies or just companies in general say that their mineral tinted sunscreen it has a universal tint. Universal? It's bullshit. It, it, it's not. There's nothing out there that's going to have a universal tint. What works for a super pale person is not going to work for a super deep skinned person. It's just not. So I wish they could say that and be a little bit more upfront. It's not bad at all. It's just not going to work for deeper skin tones without makeup. So that's what it is. It feels really nice though. Um, I would say that it does kind of dry down a little bit matte, which is what they say. It's got like a light matte feel. And again, this is for normal to oily combination skin. So that makes a lot of sense. And that said, this is actually a really big thing because a lot of tinted mineral sunscreens are super, super dewy. So people with normal combination oily skin, it's really hard to find one that's going to work for them. So if you're in the market for something like that, I would suggest this one. This is a great option. This one and the Bliss one, I will link that above. The Bliss one is absolutely beautiful as well. It reminds me a lot of this. It's a lot, well, it's like $10 cheaper, but that's a lot. Um, so these two are the ones that I found recently that have less of a dewy feel, but are still tinted and mineral. Okay, I said what I said. Okay, next one we have, now we're going into the mini sizes. I had to do this to review before I used them all because these don't have a ton, but they are travel sizes. So this is the Essential Glow Moisturizer and this is SPF 30. So it has 6.12% zinc, zinc oxide. Wow, let's try that again. 6.12% zinc oxide and 5.25% titanium dioxide. This one is a little bit less. It retails for $29 for the full size and $10 again for the mini. And it kind of has that same consistency it's not super runny. It actually, I can do a side by side. This is the Essential Glow. And this is the first one that we tried on the Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. So they look very, very similar. This one actually rubs in even better than the first one. And the first one I didn't think had, I had no issues rubbing it in, which again for mineral sunscreen is huge. But this one is super glidey. It's got a really nice silky feel. I just find that really really nice because if you've ever tried a lot of mineral sunscreens, you know that this is not common. This one claims that it's moisturizing and illuminating. Um, and it says that it's for all skin types. Now, I'm not sure I see illuminating so much in this. I think that maybe just like they use certain oils that are gonna make it a little bit more emollient, but I don't see glitter, reflex, or like highlighter kind of feel. That's not what I see at all. None of these are scented. Um, Paula's Choice is very cognizant about that. They're really good if you do have sensitive skin, just because, like I said, no scent, um, pretty great ingredient list and carefully formulated. I'm not sure if you can see a difference. Um, I actually feel like this side is a little bit lighter, which kind of makes sense because this one's not really tinted, although they looked very similar when I kind of swatched them. Um, it doesn't claim to be tinted, whereas this one really does say it, that it is tinted. This one is super lightweight and that's one of the big claims of it. And I think from the application, you can definitely feel that. But I do think that it shows a little bit more of a cast, but I'm like, picking hairs here because I I don't think that either one has a terrible cast at all. But again, I have a like light medium to medium skin tone. It's going to show more on me than somebody who is super fair skinned. So it's just something to consider. Um, you can kind of see that this side has already kind of soaked in. I think that's really nice. I don't see any like residual white cast. This side, since I just applied it like right there, I can see the difference between my ear and the sunscreen. Um, I think that will kind of dissipate as it goes in, but it's just something to keep in mind. So let's do a little bit of a close up, just see if we can see any differences as well. Let's see, especially by the hairline, you can kind of tell like right there. I just didn't blend it in, but you can see that difference in my skin tone and the white cast a little bit. Okay, so those are the two, two mineral sunscreens. So what I'm gonna do now, I'll rinse this off and then we'll put on the next two. Okay, so interestingly, not sure if you can see, 
This was the first one, so the super light one. Um, it is tinted, and you can see that it came off on this cotton round. This one was the Essential Glow, and it had no tint when it when I took it off. Um, so that's pretty big. Like for me, there are times when I don't want anything tinted and mainly because like I'm working out and I have a towel and they tend to be white and like I rub my face and then it's just covered and it looks like makeup, but it's just sunscreen. So if that's something that's important to you, the Essential Glow is really not tinted. Very good option. Okay, next up we have the Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid. These names, I swear. They're also like so super markety because youth extending, like sunscreen is probably your best chance at extending your um, youth, but I don't know. I just find that to be kind of bullshit. Mm. Anyway, this is SPF 50. This is our first chemical one. So the next two are chemical. Okay, I'm gonna have to look down for this because I have a very hard time saying the SPF filter name, so bear with me. So we have 2% avobenzone. Got that one, I can say that. 7.5% octinoxate, 7.5% octinoxate. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's what comes out of my mouth. 5% octosolate and 2% octocrylene. So this one looks a little bit different and I think it's just because like the name suggests, it's quite a bit more fluid. So as you can see, when I put it on my finger, it just starts going down. Um, and they do say that this is a water light formula, which I 100% agree with. You just rub it in and it pretty much dissipates and is gone. Interestingly though, um, when I see a formula that's this lightweight and kind of water feeling, I tend to associate it with more of a dewy finish, which I think that could just be in my head. I don't think that's necessarily accurate. <laughs> um, but they do say that this one has more of a matte finish and on the bottle, it does say it's for normal, oily, or combination skin. So you're not gonna get a super glowy look with this one. And I've actually used a lot of this one. Um, so that just kind of tells me, without like me making a statement, that I've been liking this one. And I think it's mainly because of the application. It just goes on super smoothly. Um, it's kind of one of those things where like, you want to wear sunscreen, but you don't want to know you're wearing sunscreen. I would say that this is the best one. Doesn't smell. I mean, it has a light sunscreen smell, but none of them have anything that's overpowering. And it doesn't smell like maybe like the banana boat sunscreen of your youth. <laughs> I forgot to mention this one is $33 for the large tube, two ounce and $10 for the travel half an ounce one. Okay. That's the application. It doesn't have a white cast, but chemical sunscreens really should not have a white cast these days. So if you are finding a chemical sunscreen with a white cast, just put that aside. There are plenty out there without it. So just my two cents. And the last one we have is the Skin Restoring Moisturizer. This is also SPF 50. The interesting thing is both of the two mineral sunscreens were SPF 30 and both of the two chemical ones are SPF 50. I prefer a higher SPF, like because you're not always going to even get that amount of sun protection. So the higher I can get, the better to me. I understand why they probably weren't able to get the SPF 50 in the mineral sunscreens. Um, it probably would have been a very different formula and much chalkier, much more white cast. But these are a higher SPF, if that's something that is important to you. This one retails for 33 again. So the only one that was a little bit less was this Essential Glow. Um, but the rest have been $33 for the full two ounce size. And this one just very immediately it feels heavier not in a bad way but like this one was just like watery feeling this one feels more like your typical sunscreen or moisturizer this one also is billed for normal to dry skin so this is actually the first one that i'm testing that has more of a um more of a formula made for drier skin um and they say that it's antioxidant rich you've got some oils in it um i think you have maybe even some butters in it as well. So if you are more on the dry skin side, I would say that this one is probably better, but um, you know, you're not gonna be getting your skincare properties in a sunscreen. So that's something to keep in mind. If that's all of your skincare, then you're probably doing it wrong. <laughs> but um, I think it's more for the type of finish that you want. Neither of these chemical ones have irritated my skin at all. Um, sometimes I don't have the most sensitive skin, 
but some chemical ones I have found to be kind of stingy under the eye and these don't have that at all. And this one again has a very light sunscreen smell, but um, nothing added. I'm gonna read from my trusty notebook, the SPF um, active ingredient percentages. So for this one, we have 3% avobenzone, 5% homosalate, 7.5% octanoxate, 5% octosalate, and 5% ox oxybenzone. So we have a few more filters. We didn't have oxybenzone in the other one. That is one that some people try to avoid. So if you're trying to avoid oxybenzone, this is not the one for you. Overall, I think they both look very similar. Um, they really shouldn't have a white cast. They, I don't think they do, but I would be a little hesitant to recommend it to somebody with a much deeper skin tone. While they don't have that typical mineral white cast, I don't think they are the clearest formula that I've ever tried for a mineral sunscreen. So if you do have a deeper skin tone, there are lots of other ones out there these are just not the top ones that I would ever suggest, but they're not bad at all. This is kind of unnecessary just because, like I said, chemical sunscreens are really not going to have a white cast. Um, you can see that it doesn't show up anywhere. Um, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> so guys, that is me testing them all out. Um, I hope that was helpful. I didn't want it to be super intense. But I think these are the some of the four best-selling ones that they have. If you have been interested in any of those, hopefully this review gave you some thoughts to it. I think they're all really great sunscreens. I never tested any Paula's Choice before, so this was a nice introduction. That said, I don't think they're the best out there. I think they're really, really solid sunscreens. And if you have something very specific that you're looking for, one of these could be the one for you. But if you're just looking for a normal chemical sunscreen, I wouldn't recommend either of those over some others. And if you're looking for a really nice mineral sunscreen, I recommend the Bliss one, like I said, over this one. There are also some really great ones. Um, Kinship has a one that's kind of tinted. That one would be a great option as well. So. While I'm not slamming that these at all, like they are solid sunscreens, I just don't think that for the price, $33, you're getting something so spectacular. But if these are the only things you can get or you just really love Paula's Choice, definitely try these out. Maybe try the small size first and yeah, let me know what you think. I hope you guys all have a great day whenever and wherever you're watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.